welcome back. They've been described as Afghanistan's Romeo and Juliet, Zakia and Muhammad Ali, are a young couple from different backgrounds who risked their lives for love. They have. Uh, now, New York Times journalist Rod Nordland, who's travelled the world as a foreign correspondent, is telling their story in his new book. It's called The Lovers. Well, Rod is here with us, and we'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning, Rod. Good morning. First, let's hear more about the book and see the couple themselves. The Lovers is a story about a forbidden romance between two young people from a farm village high in Afghanistan's Hindu Kush mountains. In 2014, Zakia was in a women's shelter in Bamiya to protect her from honor killing. The young man she loved, Muhammad Ali, was in hiding. They had violated strict Afghan traditions to try to marry despite ethnic and sectarian differences. Well, uh, joining us now is the New York Times correspondent Rod Nordland, who's very much involved with their story, actually, aren't you? Just tell us how you met them and or knew about them in the first place. Um, actually, because I look in my spam folder kind of religiously, and there was yeah. a letter from a women's activist who emailed, who spammed basically every journalist uh, that she could find. And she was pleading for somebody to pay attention to their case and because she thought the girl would be killed in, um, in, in an honor killing because she wanted to marry uh, the boy of her choice. And so I managed to, to get up there and see them while they were still available. She was in a mm. shelter being held and he was um, nearby. And, and then after that they escaped and I followed them and, and uh, kept following them. People were so interested in the story that, that it kind of generated interest and I kept after it. And, in the end, ended up doing a book on them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the odds they sought to overcome were enormous in the sense that because they came from different backgrounds and they hmm. weren't even allowed to talk to each other, but sort of could talk to each other when they're working in adjoining right. fields. Right. But but the, the 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 rules of life are so harsh, and mm. particularly of, of of love and marriage. In fact, well, just marriage, maybe not even love, really, mm. in Afghanistan. Yeah, and the penalty for, for violating that, you know, for violating the father's wishes about who she should marry, the penalty is death, commonly, in Afghanistan. And what was unique about this story was, was that they avoided that, first of all, but also that it was possible to talk to everybody about it and find, and find out what was happening and, and do it in, you know, in a timely enough way that it maybe helped prevent that from happening. Yeah, we'll come to that in a minute, actually. Um, so um, they, they met when they were very, very young, didn't they? And then mm -hmm. they tried to, you know, ha they couldn't even, were not even allowed to have a conversation with each other. And he gave her a phone, didn't he, which she had for a while. Yeah, several phones, because her family kept finding the phones and destroying them. And he kept slipping phones to her through intermediaries, small children, probably, in most cases. And they stayed in touch that way, and, and then eventually started meeting secretly and, and decided to, to try to get married. And he tried to get his family to approach her family yeah. and do it in a formal way and was rejected because they're different sects and different ethnicities. Things are supposed to have moved on in Afghanistan since the advent of democracy and the Taliban were, were thrown out of power. There are laws forbidding forced marriage, obviously honor, honor killings, there are you know, laws supporting the rights of women, but not necessarily practiced. No, in fact, I don't think there's a single case of, of an honor killing perpetrator who's actually been prosecuted successfully. So those laws are, uh, exist in paper for the most part only. Um, so eventually um, they, they did manage to elope, didn't they, and get married, but that put them in both, both in danger. Yes, in fact, at first her family um, pressed charges for kidnapping against them and, and also bigamy and claimed that they had already married her to somebody else. Because in Afghanistan, you can, a father can marry a daughter without the daughter's presence. And the father claimed that this had happened after the fact. It had, had probably had not really happened, but mm. in any case, that gave legal authority to chase them. And then the family was chasing them as well. And um, it was just a matter of time until they were caught. And in fact, at one point, they were caught. And From a Western point of view, it all seems, the system there seems sort of incredibly ar archaic. Knowing it as you do, is there any chance that it might actually modernize? 
Or is it always going well, to be I think like there's that? always some chance. And I think you know, th conditions for women have improved dramatically in Afghanistan. And, and there are these laws, for instance. There's a younger generation that's kind of embraced the story of, of Zaki and Ali and, and supported them. And in fact, I think their agitation was what ended up in, in forcing uh, his release from jail when he was arrested. So there is some hope that way. But on the other hand, Afghanistan is still by far the worst place in the world to be a woman. Tell us about um, their future because we talked about them in danger. They've now got they've got a child, haven't they? Are they, they do. are they safe? I suppose is the question really. I think they're safe for the winter because where they are is kind of hard to get to without being seen. But the fact is that in, you know when when there isn't any sanction for killing somebody for carrying out an honor killing, it makes it very hard to protect yourself against that. And even with their story out now, as you've reported it and and, and in the book and in these pictures that we're saying, even now. Are the families are, are her family intent on catching up with them still? So far as we know, yeah, her family's gone to ground too, so it's a little hard to be sure what their current state of mind is. But, but it, is, it is pretty common in Afghanistan for families to spend years tracking down, you know, errant girls and, and carrying out their vengeance. Because in their view, what she has, she's committed a sin and, and has, she's, mm -hmm. she's affected their family's reputation. That's what they think. And even more important than the reputation issue is the fact that, in their view, she's her father's property, right. and she stole that property from her father. All right, Rod, it's thank an you amazing story. Thank you. Thank Rod's you very much. Book is called the Love.